So let's create a very basic C++ file. I'm going to name my file as main.cpp here and then press enter which is going to create this file. Now as soon as I create the C++ file, Visual Studio Code is going to recognize that and it's going to show me some recommendations. You can see, do you want to install recommended extension for C++? So here you can click on this option. Don't click on install but because we want to see which extensions we are going to install. So I'm going to click on show recommendations here. And here it's going to open this extensions uh, tab, right? So on the left hand side, you have this bar and when you just hover over this extensions uh, icon here, you will be able to see uh, that it's for extensions. So just click on this and then uh, you will be able to uh, see many extensions for C and C++, right? So right now the recommended extension by Visual Studio Code for us is this one, which is created by Microsoft, you can see. And the uh, number of downloads are also uh, given here. So around 3.3 million downloads are done for this extension. So if you uh, don't see this recommendation, you can always go to uh, this extensions uh, tab here and then search for C++ and uh, once you search for C++ it's going to show you uh, all these recommendations right so the first the topmost option is going to be the option which you will require so you can see this one and it's from Microsoft once again and for this extension you can see the number of downloads are 27 million and what it does it provides the support for C and C++ IntelliSense, debugging and code browsing. So we are going to install the C slash C++ extension first of all. And just click on the install button which is going to start the installation process of this extension. Same we are going to do for this one which is called C slash C++ extension pack. So just uh, choose this uh, extension also, which is called C slash C++ extension pack, and then click on uh, install, which is going to install nine essential C and C++ related packs, right? So we have already installed the C and C++ IntelliSense debugging and code browsing extension. In addition, it's going to install all these extensions so that we can uh, run our C or C++ code on Visual Studio Code Editor, right? So if you want to use CMake or Make or any other uh, kind of tool to build your C++ program, this extension is going to install all the related uh, extensions for that. So you can see all the extensions in this pack are installed and now you will be able to see disable and uninstall option and let's write some code so first of all we are going to include this io stream package so i'm going to just uh, write include and you can see at every point you uh, will get the intellisense to complete your code so when i uh, just type this angle bracket it shows me all the options and then when i just type io I can see uh, all these packages which starts from IO, right? I need this IO stream, so I'm going to select this and it's going to just add the ending angle bracket also. Then I'm going to create the main method, which is simple int main and then these parentheses and then these curly brackets. Here, I just want to, let's say, print uh, hello world. So I'm going to just uh, write std colon colon c out. And then I want to print hello world. So once you have written your code, you can save your code by just pressing control s, which is going to save your code. And then you are ready to run your code. So how you can run your code on your Visual Studio Code editor. So in order to run your code, you have the option to uh, open the terminal and run your code there. Or you can just select this terminal option and you have this run task, run build task. 
So I'm going to select this option, which says run build task. You can also press control shift B for running this build task. So let me just click on this. And as soon as I click on this option, I will see all these options here. So for building my C++ program, I will require g++.exe file, right? If you need to compile the C program, so if this file name was main.c file and you wanted to compile the C program, you could have chosen gcc.exe, right? So for C++, we use g++. And for uh, C programs, we use GCC. So in my case, I'm going to use this option, which says G++ EXE build active file. And what it's going to do, it's going to build my file. And you can see build finished successfully. So my build was finished successfully. And you can see this main.exe file is generated. So now I just need to run this EXE file and see what is the output, right? So for this, I can open a new terminal. You can open the new terminal by just selecting this terminal option and then click on a new terminal. Or you can click on this plus button, which is going to open the new terminal. Now, as you can see, the type of terminal which is opened, right? So by default, because PowerShell is the default terminal on my Windows 11 operating system, so it has opened PowerShell. But let's say I want to open the normal command prompt, right? I can open it by just clicking on this arrow button and then I can select command prompt from here and it's going to open the command prompt. You can see which type of terminal or command prompt is open on the right hand side in this list. So I have this PowerShell terminal open, I have this command prompt terminal open. And it's similar to opening your CMD uh, on your Windows operating system or PowerShell on your uh, Windows operating system. So you can see this Windows PowerShell. So it's similar to opening uh, these uh, PowerShell or command prompt on your Windows 11 operating system. They are just opened in your Visual Studio code. So they come integrated with your Visual Studio code. From here, I select CMD option. So I want to uh, run my exe file using command prompt. So I can just type the name of my exe file, which is main.exe, and then press enter, which is going to print the output here, which is hello world in my case, right? So that's how you can run your program using PowerShell. So if you want to use PowerShell, so for the PowerShell, you just need to write dot and then the backslash and the name of your exe which is main.exe file and then press enter which is also going to show you the hello world result so you can run your exe file using command prompt also and from the powershell also now let me add some more code and i will show you how you can debug your c++ program on visual studio code so very simple nothing complicated about this program I just want to show how you can debug your C++ code. So in order to debug your C++ code, you uh, select this option, which is called run and debug. And here you can uh, see a few options. So you can uh, click on run and debug button here, which is going to run your program in a debugger. You can also create a launch.json file to customize uh, your debugging options right so for now what i'm going to do i'm going to just add a few uh, breakpoints here and you will see the list of all the breakpoints in this list under breakpoints so so you will be able to see uh, the list of all the breakpoints you can see it's in the main.cpp file and then they are at line 4 5 and 6 right you can disable all the breakpoints by just pressing this button which says toggle active breakpoints and it's going to disable all these breakpoints it's not going to remove the breakpoints but these breakpoints will be disabled you can also uh, remove all these breakpoints by just pressing this uh, option which says remove all breakpoints and it's going to remove all the breakpoints so let me add these breakpoints once again and let's run this uh, debugger so i'm going to click on run and debug button and once again, 
Visual Studio Code is going to ask us which debugger we want to use, right? So depending upon the debugger available on your Windows 11 operating system, you can choose from those debuggers. Because we have installed the MinGW as a compiler on our Windows operating system, we are going to choose the first option which is C++ GDB LLDB, okay? So I'm going to select this option. And this is going to uh, give me once again these options, right? So now, uh, as I said, for C++ programs, you choose the g++.exe file. And for C programs, you can choose gcc.exe files, right? So I'm going to select uh, the g++.exe file for C++. And it's going to run my program in the debugger. And you can see it's starting the debugger here. And now my program is running in the debug mode. So how can I understand that my program is in debug mode? You will be able to see this specific color for debugging, right? So this bar color is changed uh, for the debugging. And you will be able to see all these options for debugging. So from this option, you can continue to uh, the next code and then Using this, you can step over in the code and then you can step into the code and then step out of the code and then you can rerun your uh, debugging once again and you can stop your debugging using this icon. Now, because we have added this breakpoint, our program execution is stopped at this line uh, four, which is our first breakpoint. And on the left hand side, you will be able to see the list of all variables and the values uh, for these variables. So, so right now, the variable one have zero value, variable two have uh, 16 and variable sum has zero value. Because at this point, these numbers are not assigned to our variables, C++ is going to assign the random numbers to these variables, right? That's why you see all these random numbers. Now, when I uh, just click on step over and move to the next breakpoint. What happens here? You can see num1 is equal to 5 here, right? I can also watch for some specific variables. Let's say I want to watch the variable called sum, which is this variable. I can type the name of the variable and then press enter. And then I can watch that variable specifically, right? So now the value of num1 is 5 because this line is executed, but still this line is not executed. So still num2 uh, has been assigned uh, any random number. In, our, in my case, it's 16, but it can be any number because we haven't assigned 10 here because we are on this line. When we go to the next line by clicking on step over, you can see the number 10 is assigned to num2 variable, right? But still the value of sum is zero because at this point our program execution is stopped at this point. So still the assignment is not, uh, has not been taken place. So when I step over to the next line, I can see the sum value, which is 15. And you can see I was watching this variable also. So this variable value is also 15, right? So this is how you can step over and step into a method or step out of the method using these buttons and you can keep the track of all these uh, local and global variables on this uh, section. And then you also have the call stack. So right now we are in the thread one, which is our main uh, thread. If you were using multiple threads, you will be able to uh, see uh, in which thread what is happening here in the call stack, right? So this is how you can debug your uh, code. You can stop this code by clicking on this uh, stop icon here and you will come out of your debugger, right? And you can uh, see the output of your debugger in this debug console, right? So you will be able to see where your program execution is, where you have stopped in your program. So we, we stopped at breakpoint three, breakpoint four. So once I have chosen my debugger, 
I can uh, next time I can always use uh, this uh, uh, option from here from this list and then I can run the debugger okay again once you select all these options which I have shown you and when you go to the explorer section Visual Studio code is going to create this dot vs code file and here this launch dot json file is important where all the options which you have chosen for debugging are saved so here in this launch dot, dot json i can see the configuration the name of the configuration is g++.exe which is the same name here right and you can provide multiple uh, configurations in this launch file that's why uh, you can give the name to every configuration the type is cpp uh, dbg for cpp debugger request is launch and then which file you want to launch uh, this means we are in the current directory and the file name is uh, the same name as your uh, cpp file name dot exe file and you can see which debugger you, ha you are using gdb and then you have the debugger path so in our case uh, this debugger path is at this location so all the information about your debugger is uh, there in your launch.json file so you can always change this configuration if you want to use some other debugger right? let's say microsoft debugger you can change this path for the debugger from here and then use the other debugger right you also have this tasks.json file where you will be able to see uh, the commands you can see uh, the command which is going to be used to run your program see uh, g++.exe file is there and then uh, you will be able to see uh, the options for compiling or building your c++ code here so let's say i want to run my uh, debugger once again so from the next time i can just click on this uh, green start debugging uh, button and it's going to start my uh, code in the debugging mode so now once again you can see i am in the debugging mode so this is how you can set up visual studio code 